and welcome back to my channel. So, it is finally time for Vaguely Vintage episode two, and unfortunately, well, not really unfortunately, but things have changed, and I'm actually not going to be doing the episode that I originally had planned on doing due to pattern issues. So basically, if you saw Vaguely Vintage episode one, where I was talking about my style, I had this like really clear vision that I was going to be making the wilder dress, I was gonna make a couple of hacks, and it was gonna be great. However, I have since made a different dress that I basically was using um, this other dress to test out the hacks that I wanted to make, which let me grab it. So this is the dress that I made. This is a Demeter dress that I basically hacked to lower the waistline so it would hit at my natural waist and I, uh, it did not work. Made a beginner mistake, I used double gauze and it stretches, like double gauze, obviously. I ironed it, actually I have learned, I do iron my double gauze before I cut it, just because even if I iron it, it doesn't flatten it out fully and that kind of reduces the amount of stretch I get when I wear it. Um, because I have not ironed double gauze and I have a cropped Demeter tank top that is gigantic because I didn't iron it first. So I did learn my lesson in that regard. However, it's still double gauze. And basically what happened with this is I did not take into account the fact that I love really long gathered skirts. This one hits about mid calf and that weight really like drags the bodice down. So when I was trying on the bodice and pinning it to hit my natural waist, I did not stretch it down as much as I should have, that is to say basically at all. And so the front is about an inch too long and the back is about an inch and a half to two inches too long. And I tried like with the back tie, cause I did the back tie hack and I have my little tie up here. With the back tie, I tried to make it work. Um, when I tie it as tight as possible, it actually does kind of bring that back up so you can't see that it's basically basically a drop waist dress in the back. However, I wore it twice. Like I have worn this dress twice since I made it, which for me is bad. Like if I don't wear something immediately and like twice in the first week and then every single week after, I basically don't like it that much. And so I, you know, I was going to use this dress as a way to check the hacks that I wanted to make to the wilder gown and it just, it didn't work. So I'm actually going to be upcycling this um, I'll probably post about it on Instagram. I don't think I'll necessarily, I don't think I'll do a video about it. But basically, I'm not ready yet to make that wilder gown. I need, it's the fabric I got that I want to make it from is gorgeous and I don't want to mess it up. So I need to kind of consider exactly what I want to do. So my goal now is to make a wilder gown from some fabric that I liberated from my mom's stash by upcycling a different dress that I made that doesn't fit super well and the rest of the fabric that I have. I don't actually know if I have enough, but I'm gonna do my best and see if it's actually going to work the way that I want it to before I cut into my good fabric. So I've basically been putting off filming this video for a really long time because I just couldn't wrap my head around what I wanted to actually do with this particular project. So in the meantime, I actually have started sewing some other vintage type stuff. So one of the things I made was a an Edwardian apron, and I'll try and put a picture up here so you guys can see it. Um, it's basically this floor length princess seamed apron that I made out of navy canvas, and it is gold. I love it, I wear it whenever I wash my dishes, I wear it whenever I cook, like it's fantastic. Making it was a bit of a trial. Uh, it's a vintage pattern and some things didn't line up the way they should, we'll just say, but I love it. So that was kind of the first thing I made. Um, one of the other things that I made was actually this skirt. So oh, this is my circle skirt. So I grabbed the pattern so I can kind of show you. So this as I drop it. This is the Rebecca Page, Rebecca Page Betty Vintage Circle Skirt. So it's basically a fitted waist. It's got an invisible zip in the back. It is, I think, a 25 inch um, long skirt, which for me hits like two inches below my knees, which is actually my ideal skirt length, I've decided. So I made this up. I actually made it from this like sagey corduroy. I don't, it's not a real corduroy. It doesn't make those swooshy sounds, um, but it's maybe like a 
cotton velour corduroy like I don't even know I found it at the fabric store the tag said it was 100% cotton and I love the color so I went with it um so this was actually originally des destined to become a pair of pants and I was really I was just like itching to make this skirt and it needs a lot of fabric and this was the only piece that I had that was big enough and I was like actually that would make a really good skirt so I went ahead and I made the skirt and because I'm me and I am slightly extra, I also have started making a vest. So, oh, so this is my vest, doo, 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 a matching vest, if you will. And as you can see, I've got pins all the way around the bottom, which is the only reason I am not currently wearing it. So this vest is my brainchild. This is kind of uh, what the design looks like. I basically took the bodice from the Peggy Pinafore and the Demeter tank top and I kind of mushed them together because I have a version of the Demeter tank top where I've actually dropped the arm side a little bit lower because I find it's a little bit too high and I also have basically I use kind of the neckline as a base because the Peggy pinafore is basically like it goes down like this like it's basically very like the pinafore itself is very um booby shall we say and so I obviously for a vest I want it to raise up a little bit and I actually tested this first on my blanket suit which I will put a picture up here I basically I got a blanket for 50% off at like a thrift fair kind of thingy and I turned it into an all well cardigan coat all well studio pants and one of these vests and that was very intentional um, obviously I wanted it just to wear around my house but I also wanted to test out this hacked pattern that I made to see if it would actually work and it does which actually you know we're gonna try this so I basically just used some black cotton um, this is black cotton that I originally bought to make muslins of things and I think this vest I think I got the lining from a pair of uh, a muslin of some Winslow culottes maybe I don't remember um, so basically the way that I end up making this the only way that I could like really easily close the bottom was to hand stitch it. So that's why everything is pinned. There's actually a needle in here somewhere, so hopefully I don't stick myself. But this is what the vest looks like. And so as you see, it basically hits kind of the top of my waistband here. And it's just like a fitted, cropped vest. And I am obsessed. This thing is so warm. So I basically have this vision for this outfit. So one of the things I obviously knew that I was going to wear it with my wilder top because the like the colors look so so good together. But one of the things I want to do is because I have the vest, I want to make a button up top that has a collar. And I actually have I actually have a pattern from Named Clothing that has two different tie patterns and a bow tie. So I'm actually going to make um, hopefully a bow tie and a tie to go with. Um, some collared shirts that I'm hoping to make in the future. I do have a pattern for a collared shirt, but a pattern company I like recently released another one and I'm really tempted to buy it, but for right now, I'm not working on that. So that will kind of complete the ensemble. I'll have, I have two wild, wilder tops I can wear with this. I wanna do at least one button up top. I have a couple of other tops that I'm working on that will go with both my 50s and my like more Edwardian Victorian type outfits. But the one thing that I am missing is a crinoline because I am, I don't know about you, but I am not going to go to all of the trouble of making this lovely, gigantic circle skirt and not also make a 50s style tulle crinoline because I just can't. So that is going to be this video. So I am going to put the link down below. I'm actually not using a pattern. I'm using a tutorial that I found online. So I'll link it down below. Um, she explains it pretty well. I'm hoping, I've never made one of these. I've never worked with tool before. We'll see how it goes. So I have my little sketchbook that I basically just sketched out sort of what I want to do for the crinoline, how much fabric I'm gonna need and all of that. I used the tutorial to kind of figure out the math for it, which, We'll see how it works. Hopefully I did it correctly. Um, but basically I am going to do an iteration of the classic crinoline, which if you go down to the link, you guys can, um, you can scroll through and see that. But basically what I want to do is I want to do an underskirt that is going to be at least two inches shorter than my skirt. And then I'm going to do the tool on top of that just because I wear this a lot in the winter and I wear tights and I don't want my tights to get pills on them any more than they already do just from the stuff I wear them with. And I want to have that underskirt so that if I want to wear this in warmer months and not wear tights, it's not itchy. So that's kind of the plan. I'm going to just basically draft kind of an A-line skirt so it'll be a smaller profile than 
my the tool and my actual skirt but I want it to be enough that I can actually move because I'm just going to use cotton that I have on hand then on top of that I'm going to do the tool so I'm going to do basically the waistband and I think what I'm going to do is a ribbon waistband so that I can adjust it and um, that way I can tie it lower on my waist or like on my hips or I can tie it up depending on like what I want to do. I, ow, I just stabbed myself, that's cool. So apparently my needle's back here, awesome. I think that that's kind of the way I'm gonna go just because it'll also be less thick than if I were to do an elastic waistband. And so yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes. So basically we're going to have like the ribbon waistband. I'm gonna do one layer at the top and then it's gonna split into two layers. And then each of these, these layers is going to have a second like two double layer on top of that. So basically the bottom is going to be four layers. Yes, the bottom is going to be four layers of tool. The middle is gonna be two layers of tool and the top is gonna to be one layer of tool. That's the goal. I have no idea how it's gonna work. So because I'm me and I wanted something that would go because I am planning to make at least one more circle skirt. I don't quite know what fabric I'm going to use, but I would like to have at least one more circle skirt. I decided to go with a tool that was going to match basically everything in my wardrobe, which no one is going to be surprised. I got black. So this tool, there were two different sort of weights. There was one that was like much stiffer and like scratchier. And then there was this one that was softer. Now I know absolutely zero things about tool, except that it is basically mesh and you use it to make poofy skirts. So I went with the softer one. I don't know, um, I'm sure it will affect how poofy my skirt ends up being, but I'm also not trying to go like super overboard because I do intend to wear this in daily life and you know, yeah. Anyway, so I got eight meters of tool and this tool just so happens to be three meters wide. So I think I'm going to have extra, not mad about it, can't hurt to have a tiny stash of tool, like you never know when you're gonna need it. But I'm hoping that because it is so wide that I will have extra rather than not enough. So eight yards of tool. And I decided that, so in the tutorial, she recommends finishing the bottom edge of the tool with ribbon. I was looking at the fabric store and I was looking for ribbon, but one, they didn't have the width of ribbon that I would need in black and they definitely didn't have enough of it. And two, the, um, the guy at the store that was working there that day, he was like, that's gonna be really expensive. You need like a lot of it. Cause I literally, so I need 32 meters of whatever I'd need to finish that bottom because it's basically eight meters long. So the bottom layer, all of them are gonna be eight meters long and I need four of them. So if I did my math right, 32 meters. And so he was like, you know, you could do, bias tape would be the easiest and you could do satin, but it's like 20 cents more per meter and you need a lot of it. So like, why don't you look for just the matte? So I ended up going with the matte black and I honestly, I'm not super big on shiny things anyway. Like I tend to like darker colors. So I don't know why I didn't think of that before. So the real MVP of this was the guy at the fabric store who was like, no, 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 matte bias tape. Yes, thank you. So. I basically got an entire roll, this is brand new, 25 meters and then another seven meters on top of it. And I always have black bias tape at home, but the last time I bought a bunch, it's actually for a quilt I'm going to be making. And so I don't want to like kind of chew into that stash unless I absolutely have to. So even if I'm a little bit shy, I do have more tool at home, but I went ahead and just got the bulk of it straight off the bat. So that is going to be this project. I am going to try and take you guys along as much as possible. I will try and get as much footage as I can, but also not have it be super, super long. So yeah, um, this is definitely also going to be filmed over the course of a couple of days and or weeks. So, you know, this is an experiment. We'll see how this goes. So I hope you guys are excited. I am. So I actually had as a goal for 2021 to make a 50 circle skirt and I've already made it. And I've also already almost finished the vest for this. So I'm actually really excited with how the 50s outfit is coming on. And honestly, I say 50s outfit, but like I'm gonna mix and match this with pieces in my wardrobe because all of the stuff that I am choosing to make goes with other things in my wardrobe. I don't have a lot of like of the style of blouses that I ultimately want to wear, but I do have other things that I can wear that, you know, I definitely, so for example, when I had my last day of class with kids before the holidays, I actually dressed up sort of as like a Mrs. Claus thing. I'll stick a picture in here. Um, so I just used my flannel, my red flannel box top with the skirt and like you know this is definitely mixing and matching however there are certain like individual pieces that I want to make to kind of go with this and I'm getting closer you know I've made two out of the five things so 
skirt, vest, tie, top, and crinoline. So those are like the five things I want to do to kind of go with this. And um, we're getting there. So without further ado, let's get making. Okay, so the next step with the crinoline is I have to collect all my fabric and figure out exactly how I'm going to do these tiers. So I do have my sketches somewhere here. So I have this page of sketches based on the tutorial that I found, so check out the tutorial below. And basically, I think what I wanna do is start with the tool and then work my way back towards the underskirt. So my underskirt is going to be this cotton fabric it is super light and drapey and I literally have about 12 meters of it because I loved it so much and I got it 50% off um, so I bought a ton of it and so I think this will be a really nice lightweight underskirt to kind of make it so that if I do want to wear the crinoline in summer it's not too hot but if I wear it in winter then it'll give me protection so that the tool doesn't scratch up my tights so and it's just like simple um, stripes. Also because I'm not really big on doing like solid white under things, this just makes me happier. I honestly will probably end up doing this as a petticoat for my Edwardian walking skirt as well. So yeah, it'll get a lot of love. So that will be the underskirt which we will figure out later. I also have my massive amounts of bias tape and my tools. So what I need to kind of figure out is, oh my gosh, and when they cut it, there was like something sparkly on the cutting table, so there's like little bits of glitter, so that should be fun. Um, so I actually, I got the really lightweight tool just because I've never really worked with it before, and I figured I wanted something that was gonna be softer, and I wanted something that was gonna be maybe not quite so voluminous, just so I can not be like wider than a door on a normal basis. So basically, it's basic, I think it's folded in like quarters, basically. Um, and I have a massive, massive amount. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is, I think I'm gonna have to cut my bottom tiers first, just because that's like the longest and biggest piece. And from what I understand, I only have to hem the bottom with this bias tape, and then all of the layers like preceding it basically just get like zigzag stitch onto themselves. I guess. The good thing is, is I buy black Guterman thread by the thousand meters, so hopefully I will have enough to do all of my thread, like all my gathering threads and all of that in black because it would definitely be super obvious if I used a different color on this one because, yeah. So yeah, let me, huh, let me figure out how I'm actually going to cut the miles and miles of tool without it getting everywhere in my apartment, which I mean, who are we kidding? It's probably gonna get everywhere. Oh my gosh, I regret everything. But it's gonna look so good when it's done. It's gonna be so good when it's done. So next time I see you, uh, we will be working on cutting some tools.
So now that I've kind of made some progress on my crinoline, I thought I would come and give you an update about kind of what I've been working on. So as you saw in the time lapse, I cut out all of my strips. So all of my strips are eight inches wide, which it's going to be nearly impossible to see, but you see they're about that long. Um, they're eight inches wide. I have four strips that are eight meters long. I have two strips that are four meters long and one strip that is two meters long. So my first step, cutting out the tool. I have a bunch of tool left, so I might end up, well, I'll end up using it for something, I just don't know what yet, but this tool was actually so wide that this was kind of the easiest way for me to um, purchase it, even though I knew I was gonna have a lot of leftover. And then, after I finished cutting out all of my strips, I went ahead and I pressed, oops, I pressed all of my bias tape in half. So I got just kind of one, I think it's one and a quarter inch bias tape so this is out open and so to make it easier to sew it on to the bottom hem of my crinoline I just went ahead and pre-pressed everything in half so I have that and I just finished sewing the hem on one of my super long eight layer or eight meter long crinoline so as you can see here this is going to be the bottom edge whoops so it is going to be like this and honestly this is gonna take forever. Uh, I think it took me at least half an hour just to sew this one. Um, so basically what I've done, and let's see if I can even find the other end, here it is. That was easier than I expected. So what I've done is I went ahead and I overlapped my edges by just a little bit, so I don't know if you guys can see, but I overlapped it just a little bit here, and I did a zigzag stitch that I did kind of close together, but kind of wide, so that it's all set together, and then I went ahead and just did my hem all the way around. So I actually used my seven meter piece first, which means that I actually have two pieces on here. So I have, where's my end? Somewhere over here. Should have a seam somewhere. Come on guys. All right, yeah. Did I not go long enough? Well, I had to start over here and I had to overlap it with, here it is. There we go, oops. So as you can see here, so I basically added a seven meter and then an extra meter, which I hope that when they cut it eight meter, like my when they cut my tool eight meters long, that it was actually fairly accurate. I don't really care if it's a little bit bigger, but I did buy kind of an exact amount of bias tape. Now, the good news is, is that I do have extra black bias tape because it is the bias tape that I use the most for any of my projects. Um, and I honestly don't use bias tape too, too frequently, so I tend to have a pretty good stock on hand. So that is good, but it would be nice if um, I had a, kind of an exact amount, but I have a feeling that my pieces are a little bit longer than eight meters long, so I'll be a little short, but that's fine. Um, so basically, Next step is, I think what I'm gonna do, I wanted to go ahead and hem one of them just to kind of see how it worked. Now that I know that it has worked, what I think I'm gonna do is go ahead and I'm gonna sew all of my pieces into big old circles, and then I'll go ahead and I'll hem the other three bottom tiers. And the next step is going to be kind of figuring out the assembly. So I think that the way that I'm gonna end up doing it is because it's basically one that splits to two and then each of these has two. I think what I'll do is I will um, do my gathering stitch on two layers of my eight meter and do them as like a unit just so that I can gather them all together. I think that's gonna be kind of the easiest way to do that. I don't know, we're gonna figure it out. And uh, yeah, honestly, it's not super complicated. It's just gonna take me a thousand billion years, which, you know, at the end I'll have a lovely crinoline, hopefully puffy enough, so we'll see. So that is first check-in. I am going to go and sew approximately 10 hundred yards of bias tape on some more layers of tulle. So I will see you in the next bit. several hours I'm up to this point so I have hemmed all of my eight meter long tiers and I took the first two and I did the gathering stitch together and then I zigzag stitched it onto my four meter tier so I am Basically done with this one. The next step is going to be to do the gathering stitch on the other two eight meter tiers, attach them to the other four meter tier, and then I will do a gathering stitch on both four meter tiers to attach them to the two meter tier. 
which honestly, I feel like once I get done with the eight meter tiers, it's gonna go a little bit easier just because the eight meter ones are just so freaking long that uh, <laughs> it's interesting trying to attach the gathering because, you know, trying to do the quarter method where, you know, you split it into quarters and then attach it that way doesn't work as easily when it's this long. Um, I ended up basically having to kind of guess because when I was trying to attach it, for one thing, I use wonder clips. I don't use pins and I figured pins on this would just not hold very well. And so I couldn't attach both pieces the way that like they needed to when I sewed it. So I basically had to unpin it in order to sew it. But because it's so long, it kept getting twisted. So I had to like go slowly to make sure that um, I ultimately got it all lying flat, but but I did in the end, and honestly, I am getting pretty excited for how this looks. I also think that having this bias tape hem is gonna look so pretty, and even if you see it under my skirt, like I think it's gonna be really, really pretty. So, I think that is the stopping point for today. I need to get ready for bed, so I will be back. Uh, maybe in a couple of days, maybe tomorrow if I have enough time, and we will work on the next one of these. So, see you in a bit. So, I kind of got started working on my crinoline yesterday. Let's see if I can get a better angle where you can actually see. And as you can see, I've actually got all of the tool connected together. Because I had filmed bits attaching kind of the initial uh, section up here. I didn't end up filming everything, but this is what I've ended up with. So basically I have my top tier, which is two meters long. That is up here. I do still need to do a gathering stitch on here, but I'm waiting until I figure out my underskirt. And then I have two four meter tiers down here. Let's see if I can kind of lift up one of them. There we go. So you see, whoops, there we go. So I've got two four meter tiers and then at the bottom each, well, two eight meter tiers are attached to each four meter tier. So all of that is all attached together. And because I've got it kind of squished up like this, this is kind of what it is gonna look like. But if I open it out, even still um, because of the bias binding and the poofiness of the tool, it actually kind of stands up. So this is basically what I'm up to now. So the next step, as I mentioned, I still have to do a gathering stitch on this one, but I have to figure out how I'm going to do my underskirt. And before I attach the tool portion of the crinoline to the underskirt, I also need to try on my skirt and see exactly how kind of low I want this to sit. So the first bit is this is going to be the fabric for my underskirt, and my idea is to basically have a skirt that is going to be slightly shorter than the bottom of the crinoline, just so it won't peek out too much. But what I might end up doing, because my skirts are actually a little bit longer, I, I measured my gray raw silk skirt, and it's actually not counting the waistband, it's actually like 28 inches long, and I basically designed my crinoline based on a 25 inch long skirt. So what I might end up needing to do is essentially, oops, can we focus? So what I might need to do is actually basically have like, if I have the top of my underskirt here, is to connect the crinoline maybe two or three inches down so that it hits like as low as I need it to go. So I did a couple of initial sketches Oop, over here. So these are sort of my initial sketches where I was originally going to just do a big rectangle and do basically, and of course I'm mixing centimeters and inches because obviously, uh, I don't know. Um, basically do, uh, this is a little bit more than 60 inches and 27 inches long. And then I was thinking, and I might actually want to do it a little bit on like a trapezoid just so I have less fabric up at the waistband since I obviously am going to be wearing this under another skirt that is has a very fitted waistband. So I think the plan is going to be to basically do sort of a trapezoid shape. I'm going to stitch it together, but I'm actually going to stitch it so that the top like six inches don't actually connect. And then I'm going to do a channel. And that is where I'm gonna run my ribbon. And then I'm gonna figure out, so I've done kind of a dotted line here. I think this is maybe where I'm gonna put my tool. So basically what I'll do is I will sew up like the tube and the channel and hem it and then try it on and hold the tool on over it and decide exactly where I need to attach the tool to the underskirt so that it's gonna fall 
at the right length for the skirts that I have. So yeah, time to get started on that. So after a break of a few days, I am getting back to my crinoline. I just got to work on the underskirt. So this is what I have so far. I basically just took some of the striped cotton that I have and I wanted the stripes to go vertically. However, um, I basically needed the bottom of my underskirt to be as long as like selvage to selvage. So I just kind of cut it the way I needed to for the space I had. So what I did is I went ahead and I just surged the top edge and both side edges and then I pressed it over and stitched a channel and then I fed my ribbon through and then I started stitching the side together. So this is actually going to be more likely the back, but we'll see how it lays with the skirt. Um, but I basically stitched it starting from five inches down to make sure that I had enough wiggle room to get it over my hips, pun kind of intended. Um, so I have currently left it unhemmed because what I need to do next is actually try it on with one of my skirts over top and make sure that I know exactly how much I need to hem it so that when I'm sitting down or standing, you're not gonna see the underskirt. And then the next step is going to be to figure out exactly where on the skirt I need to attach my tool. So, let's get to that. So, I've got my underskirt, oops, excuse me, and my skirt on, and as you can see, if I kind of lift it up like this, I've got a good, like, three or four inches. So I think that I can just go ahead and hem it as is. And then if I take a look, sorry, I've just knotted my shirt so it's out of the way. If I look, I've got the underskirt right at my natural waist and you can't really see like the ribbon or anything like that. So I think this is gonna work out pretty well. So the next step is gonna be to take my crinoline, the tool part, and see how low I kind of need it to be placed. And so I think there's a chance that I'm going to have to, oops, excuse me, I'm going to have to actually attach, okay, let's see, this skirt is so huge, there we go. I think there's a chance I'm gonna have to attach the tool like a couple inches down. So I kinda wanna see what that is gonna do. Uh, obviously this will be easier to fit once I actually uh, sur or um, gather the steps. But, let's take a look here. So, kind of holding it up near the top of the skirt, and I've got that. So obviously I still have to hem my underskirt, but what I want to know is, when I lay my skirt on top, how does it fall? So it's definitely a little bit short. Uh, you know what, I think, let's do, pull it kind of up around the back, there. So I think what I'm gonna to wanna to do, if you can see, this is what I was worried about. It hits like right there. So I think what I need to do is actually drop it. Just grabbed my seam gauge. So I think that this is where it hits here. That's like at least six inches too short. Okay, so I think I'm gonna drop it down about five inches from where I'm holding it, which means, getting this out of the way. So I've currently got it held, oh my gosh, sorry. Currently got it held about here. And I need to drop it about six more inches. Oh, this is gonna be really low. All right, well, it is what it is. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go grab one of my chalk pens and I'm gonna mark this and then we'll see what happens. So I think that I have got the crinoline more or less sorted, but I might have accidentally made it a li little bit too long. So let me go ahead and show you. So basically, this is kind of the top bit. I ended up adding another panel over here that I actually left a split so that I could gather it um, when I tied the waistband. However, I think that my panel might be just like a tiny bit too long, but I think what I'll end up doing is, if it is, I will fold it here and just do a pleat rather than detaching everything. So this is kind of the top. And then, so here you have the bottom. So I've got oh, my underskirt that I just went ahead and did a really simple hem. I surged and tucked that under because you can't even see it. And then you can see how long the tool is, kind of as is. So let me see if I can get a better angle to give like a full body view. So here we have it. This is the crinoline all done. And now, the moment of truth, time to put on my skirt. So I went ahead and did, oops, my gray sulk 
gray raw silk skirt, sorry. The only way I can get it on over is to pull it on over top. Um, I went with the gray raw silk to test this because it's the lightest one and so it's gonna give me a best, like my best kind of look at how it's gonna drape. Um, actually, I'm gonna tuck the ribbons in, I think. The top and, oh, it's so, it's kind of flat. All right, hold on, it's way too long for sure. So, here we go which I'm pretty sure I need to shorten it about an inch because as you can see, it is for sure sticking out the bottom. What I'm a little bit worried about is because this skirt is so drapey is I'm getting almost like it almost needs another layer here to kind of poof it out. But I think what I'm gonna do is try and shorten it like I had mentioned, just an inch and see if that helps it lay a little bit better. So. Back to the drawing board. Okay, so I have adjusted that layer and I took in about an inch. I took in a little bit more in the back and probably a little bit less in the front. And I think we're pretty good. So let me show you. So as you can see, I don't have as much sticking out of the bottom there. Here we go. Also, this is a small square. Let's try not to fall off. Um, so I think that I'm actually going to leave it like this. Oh, and I'm gonna go ahead and try on my green skirt and just kind of see how both of them lay. So I will be right back. So here is the second skirt. Oop. And I think we are actually pretty good. This one actually falls, it feels a little bit better because it's a stiffer material and so it kind of holds itself out a little bit more. Um, so let's see if I can do a bit of a swoosh. Oh, oh my gosh. So I think, I think the crinoline is finally done. So let's go ahead and have some thoughts on the project. So there you have it. That is my first kind of sewing project video. Editing me is going to have a lot of fun dealing with all of the different footage, but Honestly, it was kind of fun documenting everything because this was a project with materials that I've never used before and fit issues that I've never dealt with before. So it was actually, it was fun to record this process as I went through. I am going to stop messing with the length of the crinoline for right now. There are some times when I move where it feels like I could take out a little bit of length, just so you don't really see it under the skirt. But at the same time, it's a crinoline and I feel like it's not the end of the world if you kind of see it a little bit because like you can clearly tell there's something holding out my skirt like you're gonna know that there's something under there and movement is movement like your body is not always in like the perfect spot and not shifting in any way shape or form that you're never gonna see it so I don't know that I really care that much I will say that the one thing I'm a little bit I guess bummed about and I think that if I had measured accurately the first go around because I seriously underestimated how long my skirts are when I did the skirt pattern. So the skirt pattern for both the corduroy skirt and for the charcoal rustle skirt is the Rebecca Page Betty Circle Skirt, Betty Vintage Skirt. I can't remember the exact title. I'll link um, the pattern down below. And it like when I was reading through the pattern, my brain just caught onto the fact that it was a 25 inch long skirt. So it was like, oh, 25 inches. And the, um, the crinoline tutorial I found was also based off of a 25 inch long skirt and all of that. And so I just kind of went full steam ahead. And of course, didn't actually measure how long my skirt is. And my skirts are both about 27 to 28 inches long because I like a T length. So that definitely kind of messed with things because since in order to get it to sit right on the underskirt to be long enough but not too short, um, I had to add an extra panel of tool. And so basically I have two single panels before it splits into my double panels. And I think that that is part of the reason why the middle is kind of not as floofy as it should be. For right now, I'm gonna leave it but there's a chance that I'm going to need to either, like this is a crinoline specifically for these two skirts and for any time I make this particular skirt pattern. So what I could potentially do is create another like mini layer and attach it at the same, because I basically that top panel, I attached it right along the stitch line for the channel because my ribbon is a little bit narrower than the, the channel. So I had some wiggle room to sew there. And I think what I might do eventually after I've worn this a bit and kind of see like how I like the fall and all of that kind of stuff is maybe I need to add another layer so that basically 
I have a second single layer and then do another gathered layer on the middle and the bottom one because instead of being a three tier skirt, it's now a four tier skirt. I don't know. Anyway, that's gonna require some more sewing math and I don't quite know that that is what I wanna go with. I kinda wanna wear it and see how I like it and see if it's really noticeable. Um, what I need to do is have my friend, um, one of the times that I wear the skirt, have her kinda check it out and just see like from farther away, like does it look like it's caving in on itself or does it look okay and all of that. So, aside from that, Working with Tool was frustrating. Um, it is simultaneously slippery and sticky, which is ridiculous. And yeah, but not actually that difficult. It just took a lot of time just because there was so much yardage to hem and then gather and all of that. The good thing is I do have a ton of tool left over. So if I do need to fix this crinoline or if I want to make another crinoline or what have you, I definitely have some more materials and I think it will last me for a good long while because like what else am I going to make out of black tool? So yeah, I think that that is it. This actually marks my third Make 9 project of 2021. So I have basically finished the 50s so I had three projects that were undergarments, three that were like Edwardian, and three that I wanted to do that were 50s. So I've actually finished all of my 50s projects. That's not to say that I'm done making 50s style clothing because it's a silhouette that I really enjoy. However, in terms of what I had hoped to make for my Make 9, I wanted to make a blouse, which is my Bellbird button-up shirt. So I think what I'll do is I will actually stick in a picture here so I can show you how I have been styling some of my 50s stuff, and I will show you the Bellbird button-up. I have two circle skirts now, so as I mentioned, I have the corduroy and the gray Ross silk. And now I have the final piece, which is the crinoline. So actually the final piece of that kind of 50s outfit I have in my head is a bow tie. I, I want some neckwear. And I also would like to figure out a vest. So I do have the black vest and the corduroy vest that I made that go with both of these outfits. Um, I need to play around with styling a little bit and see how that actually works out. Um, and maybe at some point I wanna do a little bit of a longer vest because the two vests that I made are very much a cropped vest and that was just the way that I designed them because I wear a lot of high-waisted stuff and so that was the length that I wanted to start with. So that's actually also done, which means of like this 50s outfit that I wanna do, the only thing left is neckwear. And of course, in the future, I will probably make some more tops. I actually have a couple of top patterns that I think will look really good with the 50s ensemble that I'll probably also wear with Edwardian skirts whenever I get around to making those. So yeah, that's both first sewing project for you guys, not just a sew along, but really kind of a bigger project going through from start to finish, as well as my third make nine and my first time using tool and first time making a crinoline, like lots of firsts in the, this video. So Hopefully this was kind of interesting to see. Again, I mentioned I will link the tutorial pattern down below because I did not come up with this on my own. I had a lot of help from this tutorial kind of figuring out the math on everything. So definitely check that out if you are looking to make a crinoline. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed watching me hem and cut yards and yards and yards and yards of tool. So that is all I have for today. I will see you in my next video. Bye.